Today, I am so happy to be here with Andrea J. Lee. Um, first of all, let me say hi to you, Andrea, and then I'll talk about your background. Hey, Andrea, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Um, so I just want to I want to share with people about what I know about your background, and then we can get into conversation. So I am really honored to be talking with Andrea because um, she is a really experienced coach. Um, I mean, she has been, uh, I'm seeing this from your bio, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So Andrea, you've been coaching since 2003. I mean, you have, right? Is that right? Yeah. And you've had a coaching business. Um, so you are really, um, I would say one of the people that, I mean, for those of us who are still doing it, I mean, you, <laughs> have one of, you know, you, you have a lot of history with this. So you have mentored a lot of the people that, that I've looked up to, that mm -hmm. I have partnered with, um, that I've worked with. So um, and you have four books and you're coming out with your fifth or is this the fourth one coming out? The fourth one is coming out. Yeah. Awesome. Uh -huh. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I have the gray hairs to show for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we don't, we don't need many years to have gray hairs in this, now, <laughs> in this industry. Now. Um, yeah. But what I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm really uh, want to appreciate is that you have tried different models of how, coaching works and how business works you know both mm -hmm. offline and online mm -hmm. um a couple years ago you did something called wealthy thought leader mm -hmm. which some people here may have heard of yeah. and um and now you're doing uh, something called uh the, the well you, you're doing something called power lab which we'll talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. and you have something coming up called innovation uh, income through innovation right so we'll, we'll talk about all that but i i just want to just just say I'm so grateful to, to have you here and I'm looking forward to all the insights you can share with my audience. Oh gosh, I feel like it's exactly, I feel like you're introducing yourself. You have all of this <laughs> too, you know? Yeah, it's, um, it's really yeah. fun to be with you. And of course so, we have a shared Taiwanese background. That's right. You know, fun stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Thank you for having me here. So, and you're, you're in Canada, just right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Canada. On the what West part of Coast. Canada? On the west coast, in on one of the Gulf Islands, it's actually a tiny little island with only a thousand people on it. I guess my Taiwanese roots are still with me. I like to live on little <laughs> islands. Um, yeah. So um, my closest big city that everyone would know would be Vancouver. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, but you do serve clients uh, and students all over the world. Yes. You know, people kind of come to your events uh, online and things like that. Um, so. I want to ask you, there's so many things I want to ask you, but <laughs> since you are doing this income through innovation thing coming up, I want to, I want you to talk about what you consider to be innovation. What is innovation? What does that mm. mean to you? Innovation is a way of looking at something freshly. Um, and so um, when we have thinking ruts, ways in which we have been, making assumptions about how a business can work or how our lives have to be or um, people around us like culture and advertising telling us that we should be working a certain way. <laughs> Anything that's counterculture and contrasting with the, that prevailing story is innovation. Oh, I love that. And so what have you seen as the I guess, mainstream way of doing business that um, you like to just juxtapose uh, uh, and, and maybe guide your clients in doing? Yeah. Oh, gosh, such a good question. So um, speed is good. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Myth. Yes. Fast, fast, fast. Yes. Like hurry up and create your things and then hurry up and buy things or hurry up and, and make people enroll in things fast. Yeah. Mm. Um, how about um, that you should listen to your market in, when you're creating your income streams that's that's a prevailing message and it's it's not that these prevailing messages are wrong it's just that one size doesn't fit all mm. and so when I like to talk about innovation it's to help people realize that even if somebody is telling you that you absolutely must do x thing you must question it for and, and ask if it's right for you so when i say um the prevailing wisdom is 
ask your market and create income streams that your market wants. I actually think an innovative way of thinking is, is what, what do you, the creator of income stream, want? What, what is something that is spiritually satisfying to you and that can, you can sustain and that isn't a should for you? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the kinds of innovative thoughts that, that that's what I mean. Totally. So let's, let's go in that direction then, because I, I'm really curious what you would think about this. Um, there are uh, a lot of visionary or heart-based entrepreneurs who create something that they're really excited about, that, they, that really feeds them. Um, but maybe they're ahead of their time or something, or maybe their audience isn't big enough that they have a hard time getting enrollment for. Um, you know, there's many reasons for that. I mean, some people maybe aren't even getting enough visibility for it. They're not even telling enough people about it. But sometimes they are telling people about it. And for whatever reason, let's say that person is having a hard time. How would you, what, what encouragement uh, do you have for them? So one of the main ways that I think you also espouse George and you are a great model of is to follow a process I call creating proof and basically it's a, like to test your idea the thing that you believe so strongly in in a nimble and inexpensive low risk mm -hmm. way yeah and in so doing actually help to educate the market and help them understand that they might want this new thing. Mm -hmm. I love that. And can you give us, uh, can, can you think of your own uh, kind of example where uh, you've been testing these and how do you, how do you test, how do you like to test things? You know, I, I feel so lucky to be able to just go to social media. I mean, so many people say, like very few things are all good or all bad, right? So social media, of course, is difficult in some ways, but I think it's a very easy platform accessible to everybody. It's very democratic, right? It's free. <laughs> um, and I'll post, I'm curious, um, how many of you resonate with the phrase business as unusual? Or... Um, if and just I to be clear, the business yes. as unusual is the name of your upcoming book. That's right. It's the current working title of the upcoming book. <laughs> um, so in that way, I'm testing the title of that book. Um, I, I belong to an online business manager community. I think you probably know that I'm involved in that community. And they recently have asked me to train them in coaching skills. So... Um, I have this new coaching tool that is called the, like, it's a hiring daisy. It's a daisy, like the flower. And it's a diagram of a daisy. And it's one of my ideas. This could be like a crazy idea. It could be a good idea. It could be a bad idea, you know? Um, so I'm going to draw it, quickly teach it on social media inside the group, and you know, show a video of it. And then let's see, let's see if I get booze and tomatoes <laughs> or if I get engagement questions, good questions. Yes. Feedback. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, I find that um, when one of my ideas isn't really uh, the right fit for my people, I don't usually get tomatoes, but I, I get crickets. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like no, nobody says anything. And then yeah. now I know, oh, okay, all right, this is not really exciting uh, to my people right now. And uh, I, I have other ideas to try. <laughs> I, I think that's so beautiful to remind people, like, I, you know, how many ideas you have from, like, from just from nine o'clock today, George, how many ideas do you think we've had? <laughs> well, I've learned to park things. So it's like, I've learned that, uh, God, I've, I have so many ideas, I have to just park them and then, mm -hmm. in a rhythmic way, kind of just introduce them gradually. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, so, so tell. So, one of the things that uh, you really uh, value is bringing this, bring the idea of nature or learning from nature and how mm -hmm. we can 
do business in a well business as unusual business mm-hmm. in a more holistic way compared to the mainstream way is much more um you know uh reductionist mm-hmm. um so what is yeah what does it mean for you to how do you think about nature and how does that relate to how we do business yeah i i love i remember watching some of your videos where you were showing like ducks and parks and stuff like that i'm like <laughs> yes i love that yeah um i live in a tiny place with just trees all around so i'm very inspired by nature and one of the ways i think it's helpful to think about nature to help us think freshly about how to grow our businesses george when when in the dominant culture When people go and buy a piece of land to build a house, oftentimes you'll hear, you know, well, that thing is in the way, so we'll just dynamite that, you know, and well, there's, there's like a water situation over here. So we'll just fill that in with a bunch of stuff. Um, And I don't, I don't really care where the sun is. I'm going to build my house in this corner of this piece of property. And that, that is a, um, can I say like a colonialistic, like, like power over the land way to build a home. In the green movement, when you have someone building an environmentally friendly home in partnership with the land, it sounds much different, right? And so it's like, all right, where is the sun? Let me build to meet the sun. Um, There's a rock here. How can I let that uh, shape the house plan? Um, Instead of fighting it, use the shape of the land as assets and as a guide. Similarly with income streams, I think the landscape that we're looking at is the strengths and the assets of the human that is creating the business. Are you an extrovert, (laughs) an introvert? Do you like to travel? Do you like to network? Are you, do you hate to do videos? <laughs> do you love to write? These are the natural, um, this is the natural landscape that we're building an income stream on. And so I think it's such a relief to not fight against ourselves and to take this fresh concept from building a home on the land in a green way and, and make, um, environmentally friendly income streams for the for the humans that run them oh i love that that yeah the income streams fit the provider and it fits the client yes yeah and and if and naturally uh there is less uh hustle there's less uh persuasion you know kind of like trying to get people interested in something so no that's that's and because the provider, it's better fit for the provider, it's much more sustainable. I mean, that's one of the things I, you know, I, in, in the intro to you, I said, you know, among those of us who are still doing this, you have, you're, you're still here and you're still thriving. <laughs> I mean, that says a lot. It really does. Because I think about the people I partnered with when I first started, and a lot of them are not around anymore. I mean, maybe they're back in a corporate job or something like that. And it's like, wait, but, right? It's like that. I'm like, wow, why can't we build a business from our soul's expression and, and, and continue to evolve it, which is why you said income through innovation. Okay. So how do you like to work with people, Andrea? I'm really curious, given that you have tried different models of coaching people, of teaching, um, I don't know, whatever you want to talk about in, in that regard, like in terms of what have you tried and what's working really well for you now? Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, I'd love to share what works for me and share it in a way that I hope will be an eye opener, maybe to everyone who's listening. I, I cherish relationship um, and it shows in my business model. The majority, I would say the majority of my work is still one on one. I do have a group. It's an online coaching group. We don't do any teaching or training. I always send people to your courses to get the training. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, the information that you bring and the wisdom you bring, that's not my strength. I'm the one that helps to like digest and then, you know, um, get the big picture and then like that. Um, so I have one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have group coaching, and I have in-person offerings like, you know, getting together, George, if we were to want to mastermind together and work on each other's businesses in person and kind of live life together a little bit and then coach, you know, like that. Um, I will shadow coach events or workshops for people. But the thing that's in common with all of these things is there's an element of just in time and closeness that I find so nourishing. Um, I, I find it very difficult to coach people at a distance. Um, I feel like I'm only coaching like, you know that, um, you know that Sufi story about the, the men t touching an elephant and everyone is only yes. touching one part? Yes. So the one person thinks the elephant is thin and like a snake because they're touching the tail and the yes. other person thinks it's like, you know, like a stingray because they're touching the ear only and they're like, everyone comes away with a different idea of an elephant. If I'm coaching a person at a distance, this isn't the same for everyone, but it is my experience that I feel like I'm only coaching part of the person. Mm. So I like to get in partnership with clients who this works for, obviously, um, and really understand holistically what's working and not, not working in their life so that the business can fit in like a house that fits in perfectly with the hill on the land. Um, and it's okay if you love that to ask that in the partnerships with your clients. And it's okay also if you think, if you're listening to this and you're like, whoa, I don't like the sounds of that at all, Andrea. Blah. <laughs> I don't want that much closeness with my clients. But, um, so I, I think that that says a little bit about how I like to work people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in groups or in person. But um, I, it, over time, I've definitely changed. And I know, George, you're the same, right? I've definitely tried a lot of things. What I don't like is, I'll say this and maybe controversial, is I don't like the, the cultural expectation to charge as much as possible. I don't know if that's interesting to talk a little bit more about. Well, yeah, because with yeah. the kinds of mentoring and coaching experience you have, you should be charging $80,000 an hour. Should I? <laughs> really? Wow. That's a lot. No, kidding. But I know you're kidding. Yeah, but it's so, so yes, let's talk about this because uh, some people might say, well, gosh, you know, um, you know, she's written these books. She's, she's led these different programs successfully. She's mentored all these people. She, she must be way out of the, our, our price range, but, um, but not necessarily. No, and I know that to be true of you, like I feel like, again, George, we share so much. So I, I think, so I'll say this in general to try to be useful to anyone who's listening. It's totally fine to charge, to charge. And it's totally fine to charge plenty. Um, what I think is not necessarily right in, in Maybe somebody will disagree. I hope to engage in constructive conversation about it if someone disagrees. But just because you can charge more, I don't think you should. I don't believe that. I think that um, money is a resource just like the earth, just like the fruit on a tree. Um, just because you can pick more and keep more in your arms doesn't mean you should. How much do you need? How much will be delicious for you? Um, what, what, what feels good about sharing can in pricing my own coaching, I like to say, of course, I'm running a business. I'm modeling running a business and charging my value, but I am an advocate for my clients keeping as much money in their pockets as well. There's enough for everybody. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Yes. Uh, thank you for that. And I also think about the others in the industry, you know, it's like, someone who's charging a lot is basically taking more from the, the, the available resources in that industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, okay, you know, and also we get like, if, if someone is paying us a, a great deal amount of money, there's a lot of pressure <laughs> also yeah. to like, wow, they're, they're spending a lot of the resources with us. And is that the right amount of pressure that we should be expecting? You know? But 
um, I want to go, go back to coaching because you have mentored lots of coaches and lots of consultants. Um, you know, you, you are so, it's so, you're so skilled at it now that it's, you know, I mean, I, I remember, you know, that, that you know, listening to an interview with you um, when, when I, you know, s close to when I started the business, I'm like, she's already so good at this, you know, and like now you've, you've gotten, you've gotten even better at it. So what would you say to somebody who says, I want to become a better coach, um, consultant, or like a provider, a healer? Um, how do I, I know there's, you've written books about this, but okay. how do I, like what's, what's, what's alive for you right now in terms of how we, um, how we might better serve clients? Like, yeah, what's important to you now? It is a beautifully phrased question. It, what it allows me to access, George, is that I actually think less is more. So when I'm coaching now, because I have the experience that I have, the question that I'm carrying around that I'm trying to live is what's the right dose of what to say? And then enough quiet so that it's like it's like the saying um only by removing can we create perfection once you've removed everything that you need to remove that is art mm -hmm. it's like a sculpting a, yeah. a for sculptors you know so when we're new coaches i remember having the feedback from a supervisor that I did a lot of talking in my coaching session, just like right now, <laughs> but this is an interview. So I guess it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're, much. you're, you're don't, you don't, you're not as talkative as, as you know, a lot of interviewees. So oh, really? <laughs> I noticed that you are very, yeah, you are giving the right dose also, but oh. yeah, you're, you're the supervisor was saying that, Oh, a lot of talking. Right Too now. much talking. And so as I, I'm getting more skilled as coaches become more skilled or you aspire to become better. I think this is a very good thing to keep in mind. What's the least amount you can say for the best effect? Same with building a business. What's the least amount of effort for the most wonderful return in your business financially and otherwise? Yeah. Seek the minimum level. Yes. Yes. You know, it, it it's, I think it's very, what you're saying is very foundational to, to the true idea of coaching, which is empowering the client, right? It's like letting, helping the client wake up to their, re, their own resources, thereby having those skills that they've developed be much more self-empowered rather than depending on us more and more and more. Right. Right. Right, exactly. And when we talk a lot, we're actually kind of stealing their experience, right? Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's worth, that's worth pondering on. Um, so time is quickly coming to a close mm -hmm. for our interview, sure. and I, I, I want to thank you for this. We could talk hours and hours on this, but um, tell us what, if somebody is saying, gosh, Andrea, I, I, I do want to, work with you in some way, um, what are the different ways that people can, can start to work with you? Thank you. I think it would be really fun to invite people to come to this little five part email. It's a little email based yeah. mini course. What's it about? Completely free. It's about income through innovation. Oh, great. Great. Um, yeah. Yes. And it has exercises in it, some visualization, some things that you can actually fill in and should give you real progress. Um, so it's at income through innovation.com and it's some of my favorite writing, some of my favorite silly analogies and um, fresh ways to look at things like some of what we've talked about today. So I invite everybody to take that in. And then from there, if you're interested in pursuing a conversation about how to go to a next step, there will be instructions in there. So I, I really welcome that. Your newsletter is one of the few that I actually still subscribe to. So 
it is uh, it is a, a good invitation. Um, great. Well, you have um, you know you've mentioned you do work one on one with people. You also have group programs. Mm -hmm. um, you have, of course, an active social media. So people should follow you there. I'll have the links to thank whatever you. links you want for me to include. They'll be there. Super. So thank you so much, Andrea. Um, maybe give us one last encouragement to the person who's saying, I want to build a business that is unusual, that is, that is me, that fits with me. Um, maybe up to now they have tried different things and it hasn't worked as well as they'd like, or maybe some things have worked, but they, they, wanna, they really want to step it up this year and, and make it work well for them. What, what's like a closing encouragement you want to share? You know, it's so great because that the five part eight course is definitely going to help with that. But one of the things I write about in there for this very moment, even if you don't have time to go subscribe to that, um, when people struggle with getting their businesses to feel like they're in flow, it's usually because there's something is missing or broken about how they're doing it. And a lot of times people will avoid it and not think about it and just try a new thing. So my invitation to you is to remember the pearl inside an oyster doesn't form unless there's a grit first. So what is the grit that is pissing you off, making you upset, getting you annoyed and frustrated and stuck? Journal on it, bring it out, let the grit be alive so that we can use it to turn into a pro. And a lot of times the struggles will melt away from there. Wow, that is profound. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to getting the, the five parts uh, exercises and things like that too. So I'll be sure to check that out. Thanks. Thank you so much, Andrea, for the, all the work you do. Thank you for having me, George. Thanks.